Thank you, Dina, for that. Um, I just want to make sure that Anika has audio um, now. Got it. Okay, I saw the message. Um, but thank you for that, everyone. Good morning. It's definitely a privilege um, being here today. And like Dina had mentioned, uh, I was the one of the class uh, alumni that took the class at the first um, year, which was back in 2018. And that was definitely a life transformation for me um, to be just able to get the, the ex, um, experience of the gospel in a new perspective. Um, I grew up in church, but it was everything was done in Spanish. And so taking this class for me in English was definitely a challenge, but it made me, um, it helped me develop and grow. And so it's coming back and being able to support and, and, and help out with the team is always for me um, of great privilege and honor. So I wanna thank uh, Young, Dina and Nate for that and Tom as well. Um, and so um, today I wanna share and talk a little bit of what is evangelism. Um, and I was, maybe if Young and Nate can give me access to uh, be able to share the my screen. Um, I have a little presentation or just so you guys can follow along um, that will make it easier. So I wanna share my screen with you. Um, and the question and the topic that we're gonna be talking about today is evangelism. Um, and for this, I wanted to share the verse in Matthew. Um, I, put, I put it in Spanish, but it's Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And this is actually a verse that I wanna highlight as well, because it's a verse, one of the verses that you um, will be required to memorize, or it'll be helpful if you memorize it. Um, and so just briefly, I'm gonna read it. And it says, and Jesus approached and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to keep all the things I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you every day until the end of the world. Amen. Um, and so I wanted to focus on this because I wanted to, the specific, this verse, I wanted to um, get the example of Jesus and use him as, you know, our, he, be, him being our leader and, and just the perfect example of what evangelism should look like. Um, and so I, the question that I, I followed up and that I asked myself was, what, well, what exactly is evangelism? And uh, growing up for us, uh, evangelism was almost a competition for us. So every Sunday we would wake up early, we'd get dressed, my sisters and I, you know, my father being in the ministry and um, going out, you know, early uh, before Sunday school. So we get up, get dressed. Um, and then go to church and meet with the rest of the congregation. And then we would, everyone would get together and drive to the local park, which was MacArthur Park um, on 7th, I believe, like Wilshire and 7th, very popular park. And um, we would get a stack of tracks, a whole bunch of tracks. And then we would, you know, it was four little girls running around the park, giving out tracks. And there was no follow-up. There was no, um, you know, like, let me hear your story or why don't you share my story? So just imagine we're all, my sisters and I, we're all a year apart. So it was, you know, like a seven, eight, nine, and a 10 year old running around the park, giving out tracks and just saying things like, Dios te bendiga, Cristo te ama. And it was a brief message. I mean, and, uh, and some people would, you know, um, be amazed by that. Uh, but over time, I started realizing that evangelism is more than just one, a competition, and two, is more than just giving out tracks um, for a brief second and then running away yelling, I got him first, I got him first. <laughs> um, that's not what evangelism should be. Um, and I learned that, um, and I continue to learn that over time. Um, but I wanted to share with you this morning a story of Blanca, um, who uh, is, she's a member of the EV Free Church. 
Um, and her story to me just has, she's one of the alumni as well. So she was part of, of my group back in, in the first class that we took. And I just learned so much from her. I'm still in touch with her. And her story with her permission um, is what I wanna share today. Um, and so this is strict from her, um, but I'm gonna read it um, or paraphrase it, paraphrase it for you guys. Um, so Blanca Tolentino is a member of the first Hispanic Free Evangelical Church. Um, and three years ago, uh, she took the class. Again, she took the class in 2018. Um, and she keeps learning and has been uh, very supportive to just continue discipling uh, in her journey. Uh, uh, 20 years ago, she met her uh, she met a sister from the church and her name is Maria Castillo. Uh, the, Blanca considers Maria her spiritual mom. Um, and so this is very important because when I listen to the story from her, she always, you know, mentions like my spiritual mom, my spiritual mom. And so the fact that the image or the, um, uh, you know, perspective that she has from this person, from Maria, is to me very strong. Uh, because she's not just some other member from the church. This is the person that has spiritually guided and, you know, has carried that title of a spiritual mom. Um, so Maria did not evangelize her through the word, but rather through her actions. Um, she was, she always had something to share. She brought toys with, for the kids. Um, she would give her taxi coupons. And at the time, uh, she also gave her coupons for uh, the different restaurants like Crazy Chicken or the Boxes of Love or, um, you know, different events that she had. Two years later, uh, Marie, uh, Blanca was going through a diff very difficult time. So she was separating from the father um, of her children. Um, and at, at the, and that day, uh, she met with her spiritual mom. And from there, uh, Maria introduced Blanca to the church, so connected her to the church. And from then on, started connecting her, introducing her to, to the Lord. And then um, that's where Blanca started seeing the transformation in her life. Um, Maria started discipling Blanca and um, she would go to her house once a week and then give her that uh, abundant life class. So that discipleship class um, or introduction to the, to, uh, the, the gospel. Um, and it was a way to evangelize, but at the same time, it was a, a way to grow in the gospel for Blanca. Um, it was also a way to make friendships between, a strong friendship between them. And then at the same time, Blanca started serving in the church and then also started taking more classes to continue to learn. Um, and like Maria, eventually Blanca started teaching um, the class to other sisters that would eventually join um, the church. Uh, some woman who also knew personally both Maria and Blanca and then also had needs, personally, personal needs, um, but would also come to church. Uh, Blanca uh, did what she thought uh, for her was appropriate to share the gospel. But um, at the same time, she started creating friendships. Um, when they were in the shrine, uh, and also another important thing was that for Blanca was that she would make it a point to sit next to the, the new sisters or the people that would come, um, just so they wouldn't feel alone and they would feel supported. So in conclusion, Blanca says, evangelism is not only a way to show the gospel, but it's also a way to follow them to walk together. And she shares Leviticus 26, 4, which says, I will give your rain in its season and the earth will yield and its products, yield its products and the tree of the field will give its fruits. And so from this, um, I, I, I think that Blanca would have done a better job sharing her story and I'm really sorry for that. But um, from the story, that I've um, shared with you and from what I've heard from Blanca, I wanted to point out a couple of points and I wanted you to remember this. So going back to what the question, what is evangelism? And we are, I already answered, so what evangelism is not. So it's not just giving out a tract. It's not just saying, uh, staying with the person a second or two and then walking out. 
evangelism and what I've learned throughout the years uh, since being with Crew is one, meeting people in their needs. And I wanna highlight this because if we go back to Blanca's story, we see that Blanca wasn't just um, approached by Maria in a time where, or it, she was approached by Maria in a time where Marie, um, Blanca was going through a very difficult time. Um, and that's part of evangelism. You know, we're not, we're gonna meet people wherever they're at in their life, um, in their time of needs, in their moment of, in their you know, low moments. We are called to, to be with these people, to be with, the, uh, meet with them. Um, and so that's one of the things that when you approach someone and you wanna start that or evangelize someone, be open to the idea that this person might not have their whole life together. They might not be holding everything together and that's okay. Um, it's okay for us to meet with them and we might not be able to uh, solve or we might not have the answers for them at that moment but because evangelism is more uh, deeper than the one second meet, um, we get to walk along with the, with the person, with the individual. We get to um, share with life with them. And so that uh, brings me to the second point, which is sharing the gospel. Um, because we don't initiate the conversation by sharing the gospel. If we go back to Blanca's story, she says, you know, she started this uh, friendship with Maria uh, by Maria, you know, get, inviting her to different events. So sharing coupons share with her, boxes of love. And in the time where Maria needed someone to be with her the most, or excuse me, in the time where Blanca needed someone the most, Maria was there for her. And then moved on to the second step, which was, you know what, I, I can connect you to the church and started bringing her over to the church. Um, and, and introducing the, the gospel and sharing the gospel and just, you know, the gospel, it's, the Bible says that the, the, the Bible, the word of God is, is alive, right? And so we have, we can take uh, specific verses and promises and just reminders and just word, specific word that can meet, not, can fulfill and can satisfy that individual in that specific moment, in that specific um need that they're that they're having and another thing that i also want to highlight from blanca's story was the leadership development that we see through um maria in blanca's life and so even in the time again the lowest point of blanca's life maria was constantly there maria was continuously inviting her to church and just walking along with her and not only on the personal side, but spiritually, Maria started introducing Blanca to these, you know, uh, uh, the abundance life classes or just the discipleship. Every, I, I believe that every church has a different, um, you know, uh, introduction or way to walk with the, the newcomers at, from the church. Um, specifically in, in Blanca's church, they had, you know, uh, classes designated for, for the newcomers. And so eventually, not only did Blanca uh, see the transformation in her life, um, and I also wanted to highlight what we learned um, from the first class from Pastor Larry Acosta. You know, when we start speaking and and um, truth, and we start you know believing in in those that we're discipling, even at the times that they're not believing in themselves, I think that's the transformation. That's the power of evangelism as well. Um, because we see that in Blanca's story, she was able to do that transition from taking everything in to eventually now she's the one discipling or leading, teaching others as well. Um, and so that's the goal that we want to go for. Um, it, it almost becomes like that, you know, the never ending like circle of life <laughs> um, where, you know, we learn from Jesus and, you know, we, we, we're we learning, we go along, we teach others. And then those others, again, you know, learn from us that teach others. And it just, you know, becomes a, a, a cycle. Um, and that's evangelism. So evangelism, to me, it's not just a parallel line where it goes from point A to point B and it ends there. No, it's a circle. 
it goes around and around and around. And we're continually, you know, doing life together. We're continually growing. We're continually learning from Jesus. We're learning from each other and helping others learn as well. Um, and so highlighting again, the points of evangelism, meeting people in their needs, Sharing the gospel is very important. Um, and then again, focusing on that development for heat, um, leadership development. Um, and so I wanted to take this time to also share with you a document. Um, I don't know, it's, I don't know, let me know if you can see my, if you can still see my screen. So as part of the uh, requirements for this class, you're going to be um, preparing your own personal story. And why, why, do we, why do I want to focus specifically on your personal story? Because sharing your personal story is also a way for you to evangelize. You know, um, Blanca mentioned that evangelism isn't just sharing the word, but it's, you know, doing life, walking with um, the individual, but then also, um, it, where it says, uh, evangelism is not only to show the gospel, but it's following them and walking along with them. Um, and a great way for you to open that door or have that uh, start a conversation is by sharing your testimony or sharing your personal story. And um, Nate will be sharing with you guys the link to this so you can follow along. Um, but he, so our story, again, based on the video that we had seen is eventually also Jesus story, it's his story. Um, and so every time we share our story, our testimony, um, we're honoring God and giving him the opportunity or showing others the opportunity to see um, what the transformation that God has done for us. Um, and so putting together, I want to go over this document with you. And if you have it available, uh, again, open it up. But I also wanted to share this with you. Um, so your story, regardless of how spectacular or ordinary you think it is, is a story about God's character. It is your eyewitness account of how God has rescued you from sin and death through Christ and changed your life as a result. And when we share our story with others, we help them get to know what God is like and what he can do as well in their lives. And um, whether you are in a line at the grocery store, sitting with a family member or standing in front of a group, the Bible calls us to always be ready to explain our hope in Christ with gentleness and respect. Sometimes, we like to think that because it's our story, we don't have anything, we don't do anything to be ready to tell it. After all, we were there when it happened and we're living it now. Yet we can get nervous, become sidetracked or forget things when sharing our testimonies, which can be confusing or distracting for those listening. This is why a little preparation and practice can be so valuable. And, um, I put together, uh, so putting it together, and these are just some highlights or key points on um, how you can put together your story. So one, you know, you would write the opening. So identify a theme you can use to frame your story. <clears throat> what do your life revolved around? Relationships, reputation, or money? That is what it revolved around before coming to Christ. Um, and how God used and um, what did your life revolve around that God used to help bring you back to him and briefly illustrate how that influenced your life? Um, the second point is your life before Christ. Paint a picture of what your life was before you came to Christ. Don't dwell too much on or brag about the past sin struggles. Share only the details that relate to your theme, just enough to show your need for Christ. And we can really see this in Blanca's story. Um, she doesn't focus, if we look at her story, you know, she talks about briefly about her life before, her struggles, and then briefly mentions the hard situations that she was living. And then she also um, 
she doesn't dwell too much in you know in in the in the sins or the past struggles that she had. Um, how can how you came to Christ? Give details about why and how you became a Christian. Communicate in such a way that a person you are that the person you are talking with and anyone who overhears you, hears you can understand how they can can become a Christian too. Even if your listeners are not ready for that, God could use your story and explanation of the gospel to draw them to himself in the future. And this is, again, perfect example because we actually see the, the, um, the person that God used uh, to bring Blanca uh, to, to him, to Christ. Um, share some of the changes that Christ has made in your life as they relate to your theme. Emphasize the changes in your character, attitude, or perspective, not just mere changes in behavior. Be realistic. We struggle as Christians. Life is far from perfect, but what's the difference about your life now? Um, and then lastly, the closing. End with a statement that summarizes your story and connects everything back to your theme, if you want. Close with a Bible verse that relates to your experience. And the verse that Blanca chose in her, for her story, I think is amazing, which is Leviticus 26, four, I will give your rain in its season and the earth will yield its products and the tree of the fields will give its fruits. And I think that's something that Blanca um, holds true to her life because it really is um, an image of how she, her life has gone from a, a hard moment to how she is doing now. She's, you know, obviously she's giving fruit. She's an active member in her church. And now she's not only intaking, but she's outpouring into others as well, um, which eventually, you know, will um, that becomes fruit uh, as well. And so going back to the document, um, as part of the, again, the requirements, you would have, you'll have to take some time and, you know, um, go, go through and write your testimony. The goal for this is to have it done in three minutes. So if you could condense that, uh, your story um, in, and share it in three minutes, that's the goal that, um, that we're trying to go for. Um, we also have some questions that would help you uh, answer and, and almost like outlined your story. And so over during the week, you'll have some time to, to do that as well, or take some time to do that. Um, some helpful hints uh, for writing your story. Pray before you write out and share your story. Write the way you speak. Don't be over, overly negative or positive, just be honest. Don't criticize or name any church denomination, organization, or individual, I would add. Um, think about your listeners. Avoid overly religious terms. Keep it short. Aim to tell your story in three to five minutes and practice telling your story until it becomes natural. And again, um, evangelism is, it's, you know, it's real, it's being honest. And so this, by opening up and sharing your story is a way to introduce or open that, um, that door to be able to relate to the person. It almost brings down that defense wall um, from other individuals to be able to open up and listen out um, to you. Um, so that's, again, one, one way to, event, to open up for evangelism. Um, another tool that I wanted to share with you is called God, uh, the God Tools app. And I have it, let me see. I have it, I have it here. Um, so I really love this one. This was actually introduced to me uh, again through Dina and through Crew. And so if you have some time, I would suggest that you download this app. It's um, both found in both iPhone and Android or so Apple Store and Android. And so what it does, it has uh, the, tr the, the tracks that, you know, we're so, the paper tracks we're so used to uh, handling, but it has it all in your phone. So it has the, the uh, flexibility of being able to have everything in the palm of your hand. And it has uh, tracks that um, I think 
eventually Dina will be going over these some of these tracks um, throughout the course. But uh, for example, knowing God personally um, is a very uh, easy and a practical uh, form you can use or information you can use um, to, to introduce someone to the gospel. Um, another one is the four spiritual laws. Again, it's a classic presentation of God's invitation to those who don't um, yet know him. And it really breaks it down into like simple terms. It, it, could, like, it backs you up with verses. Um, it helps you simplify um, and just really introduce someone who has never heard of Jesus or someone who has heard of Jesus but isn't fully you know, walking in faith with Jesus. Um, so it, it, this whole, it's one application. It has different tools that you can use and it will help you equip or meet um, the individual wherever they are in their um, walking uh, life or spiritual um, path. And so I think that that to me was also a great uh, tool. And let me see. And I, that is it. That's, I think.